So I know there's a lot of confusion about what the heck ASCAP or BMI are doing, how they're collecting money, where they're collecting money, how the entire process works for distributing performance royalties to producers like you and I. How does this whole thing work? Well, in this video, I wanna break down basically the four essential venues, the areas where BMI and ASCAP or other PROs around the world, so if you're not in the US, you might be a member of a PRO in your own country. By the way, I get this question all the time. Yes, if you're not in the US, you can join BMI or ASCAP, but if you're already a member of the PRO in your home country, you're gonna either have to get a waiver to have a portion of your catalog represented in the US, or you're gonna have to get out of your current contract. So just make sure you're aware of that. I do have a video on my channel called um, Can Foreigners Join ASCAP and BMI? So you can search that after this if you wanna learn about that. But in this video, I wanna talk about these four main areas. There's actually a fifth one too, but the fifth one usually doesn't uh, work for us in terms of the TV film licensing industry, okay? About where we get our tracks placed, usually in the sync licensing business. So I'm gonna walk through these four venues, basically how um, they are paying the PROs, how the PROs are collecting money from them, and eventually this is all the money, what I, what I talk about in this video, this is basically the big pool of money that eventually gets divvied up into your bank account, my bank account, right? It gets sort of divvied up into all the publishers and songwriters that are represented by the PROs, okay? So the first one I wanna talk about is of course my favorite, which is TV, okay? This is what my entire channel is built on. This is what everything that I teach is really focused on is TV placements. Yes, there are other places to get your tracks placed, but primarily that's where my bread and butter is, is TV performance royalties. It's gonna be probably where your bread and butter is as you get into this business as well. So you really need to know about how it works with TVs, okay? So basically what happens is the networks will uh, negotiate essentially blanket license fees with the um, with the PROs, okay? And these are all negotiated. Sometimes they're quarterly, sometimes they're annual. They can be five years long. They can be, they can be very, um, there's no industry standards essentially. So they can be very um, flexible in terms of the terms that are negotiated. So NBC, ABC, CBS, all of these will individually um, negotiate with ASCAP BMI in terms of the blanket um, amounts that they're gonna pay to be able to use the music that they wanna use in the catalogs represented by ASCAP and BMI. So hopefully that makes sense. So ASCAP and BMI represent basically every song you can ever think of, right? They have a collection of them. And then uh, in, uh, NBC and ABC will basically negotiate with them to want to be able to use, hey, we wanna use a lot of music in your catalog. How much are you gonna charge us this year to be able to put that in our original content that we're producing, right? So that's how they do it. Now, how does that all get reported back to the PROs? Well, they use what are called cue sheets, okay? This is not something you'll ever see. I really never gonna see this. Very few situations where you'll ever see these things. This is all happening on the other side of the equation in this business. But basically what these are, let's say that there's, uh, you know, ABC is producing a reality show. At the end of the production, when they finish an entire episode, what they're gonna do is put together uh, a cue sheet, which is essentially a rundown of all the music that was placed in that particular episode. It's gonna have the time, how long the track was placed, probably the type of placement that it's actually going to say, like, was this in the background? Was it a foreground? So they're gonna actually put a lot of that metadata into the cue sheet. They're gonna have the publisher information, the songwriter information, uh, obviously the title of the track. So a lot of metadata that's crucial in terms of getting you paid is all going to be included right there uh, in the cue sheet. And what they do is they submit that to BMI and ASCAP, okay, depending on where they're negotiating their contract, okay. So that's basically what they're going to do is they're going to send that off. And now BMI and ASCAP has a cue sheet. They run down. They go, okay, well, this songwriter got five seconds of placement on this TV show. It was a background royalty. They have, here's where it gets a little bit frustrating for us songwriters and publishers, is they have a formula for how they decide what, everybody gets paid for each placement. They don't publish that though. Neither one of the, uh, none of, no, I don't think any PR actually publicly puts that out there. They'll tell you what factors into their calculations in terms of you know ratings, time of day, is it prime time, the type of the placement, how long the song is placed, et cetera, et cetera, right? Does the track have vocals? Is it just instrumental? So there's a lot of factors that sort of, they tell you this is what influences our decision to do this but they do not publicly put out the algorithm, essentially the equation that they use to say, all right, because even if they did that, you also don't know how much did they negotiate with, let's say ABC for that particular year. So let's say in one year, for, for just for a sake of example, let's say they negotiate you know, a $50 million contract with, with BMI or something like that. Um, let's say ABC did. Well, let's say the next year that drops down to 40 million, okay? So in that following year, the total pie for the income, for the royalties, for everybody to gather, shrank $10 million. So even if this is the same formula, 
the pie is now a little bit smaller, right? So that's also, there's so many variables and factors in this. So I understand why it's really hard to wrap your head around it, exactly why you're getting paid, what you're getting paid. But for now, this is basically the best solution. This is the best, um, you know, this is really all we got, essentially. Um, I think in the future, we'll probably have some new um, alternatives to royalty tracking and getting, pay and, and getting paid and some more transparency. But for now, your PROs are your best friends, so treat them nice, okay? Because they're basically allowing you to do this full-time or potentially down the road doing this full-time, okay? So that's TV, all right? Now let's go to the second one. Second one would be uh, radio. So obviously, I've gotten a few radio placements, not that my tracks played and aired as if like, oh, here's Jesse's track playing, right? I wasn't, my, my track wasn't featured in terms of next to other artists, but let's say there's a promo, a commercial, a station ID, stuff like that, right? So promo kind of music. So it's still technically production music because it's used to either um, help out the identification of the, the station or it could be help for, maybe they're doing a, you know, a traffic report and they want some cool music in the background that's the kind of stuff usually you're going to see in this business okay and usually their pay or what they're going to pay out for the um um for their blanket licenses is going to be on the reach so how big is the station you know what are their uh, what are their numbers how many people are tuning in how big is the market that they're in right so there's a lot of those kind of variables that they sort of negotiate from year to year um i haven't gotten a lot of income from uh radio performances radio uh royalties but there's still some money to be made there, so it's not something that you should just completely write off and not even think about. Um, usually what you'll see is that when you get accepted into a library, if they have those connections, your tracks will be shopped to both TV, film, commercials, and radio. Uh, one of the libraries that I work with, they just brought on a partner that represents, I don't know, 200 radio stations, basically, uh, in, in terms of feeding them the production music and the background music they might need for their promos and, and special uh, maybe news you know, items or whatever that is. So. It's definitely no joke, it's no small potatoes, but for me personally, just in my career, I haven't seen a lot of income from it, but you might see quite a bit, you never know. All right, number three would be retail. So this is, you know, cell phone stores, clothing stores, um, grocery stores, basically anything where anybody's selling any product or service essentially, okay? Um, and usually those are gonna be negotiated by square footage of how big the retail space. So a big, large warehouse that's cranking out a bunch of popular music. Um, this is not usually for us. Uh, we've actually had, I've had one opportunity where um, I submitted music for um, AccuView contact lenses and it was actually gonna be placed in, I think, um, was it Lens Crafters? Uh, I don't remember. It was going to be in, it was going to be a display, basically, that we're going to put into a bunch of retail um, outlets all over the place. And it was explaining some AccuView contact lens, which is great because I actually use con uh, AccuView contact lenses. So I actually stand by their products. Um, but uh, so that's that's been a rare thing for me. I haven't gotten a lot of those kind of opportunities, but you certainly could uh, find yourself in those uh, situations where you're going to be getting your music placed into a retail store or something like that. Um, as far as I know, I could be mistaken on this, but I don't believe there's any real way to track royalties on that because that's not going to be airing in a sort of public broadcast, right? These are all private, closed circuit uh, TV um, performances, essentially. So usually what you're going to find in those kind of deals is you're going to get your one-time payout. It's like, hey, we're going to pay you, you know, five grand, 10 grand, whatever we're going to pay. And that's it. There's no back end on this. You're basically getting your one-time fee. That's usually how you find it on there. I don't know if there's any other way to track those kind of placements to get those royalties. Not that I'm aware of. If you guys do, please leave a comment below. I love learning new stuff from you guys too. Uh, and the fourth one is hospitality. So this is going to be restaurants, um, hotels, you know, those kind of um, outlets. So once again, it's definitely based on how much they pay. The, the PROs is based on square footage and also where the music is played. Is it uh, played on TV? Is it in speakers? Is it a big part of the atmosphere? Is it just a small little part of the, the restaurant uh, or the hotel? You know, how, how pr prominent and um, how, how much are you using this music to really engage your customers if it's a small little part of it you know they're gonna have a lower fee if it's like we blast this music all over the place to get people excited you know in people's rooms and all over the place you're gonna have a higher fee okay now i know your question is do does every retail store and every hospitality outlet actually pay <laughs> what they're supposed to be paying when they play of course not uh there are probably tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of smaller mom and pop places that are not paying their dues okay and usually how it works, it's just sort of like when you're small enough to be under the radar where nobody's really gonna know you're playing. I mean, you guys know what basically happens in most restaurants probably um, is they've got a Pandora playing in the background, right? They've got maybe the premium service, they paid their 10 bucks a month, but they're just playing music and they're not going and directly asking BMI or ASCAP for the blanket license to be able to do that. They legally, technically should do that because they are using this music to enhance their business. So they should be paying their dues. 
but what are you going to do about it? Okay, there's just no ASCAP or BMI police out there that's running around uh, trying to get all these smaller players to actually uh, comply. So, and one of those one of those things where you just whatever you can't really do much about it. It's just happening, so you just have to sort of wipe your hands and go. That's okay. You can't win everything, okay? But there are obviously, I think, more of the major corporate retail chain shopping centers, that kind of thing. Those are the ones that are, they're big enough. They're gathering enough attention, enough interest, and enough just eyeballs on their establishment. They're not getting away with doing this without paying, okay? So most of them are complying with that, and songwriters usually are getting their placements um, and getting their payments. For you and I, if you're getting in the sync licensing business, we probably won't see a lot of that because obviously, what do they want to play? Do they want to play production music that nobody's really heard? No, they want. The, t the pop music, they want the iconic music, they want the throwback music that everybody loves, that everybody's excited about, and they go, like, oh, I feel good, I love this song, and why? Well, that makes you maybe wanna buy something for somebody, or makes you more in a, in a better mood, and so when you're in a better mood, you feel like spending more, and you feel like staying a little bit longer, right? So this is all just like, you know, psychology and marketing 101 is why that works. The fifth one, which is not really so much useful for you and I if you're in the sync licensing business, if you're an artist um, and you create original music, maybe that you could uh, benefit from this, is venues, right? So live performance venues. Um, and usually what they'll do is they'll pay an annual blanket license, just like all the other ones, um, so that when they have musicians that come in and perform live, they can play any cover songs they want. They basically want to cover all of the performances of, so if, if you've ever gone to a rock show, you might have gone to a show where they start you know, doing a cover of Nirvana or a, whatever, a Madonna song, and you're like probably wondering, like, did Nirvana get a cut of this? And did it, Well, there's probably not a direct link in terms of like, this band played Nirvana's song one time, so therefore they go pay. It's not usually like that. How it works is the venue has paid an annual blanket license fee to BMI or ASCAP to cover the cover songs that basically um, get performed in those venues. Now, is every single cover song paid out and everything is above board? Probably not, just like all the retail and other locations, but um, usually bigger venues, they will get shut down. They will definitely get lawsuits thrown at them. They will get injunctions and cease and desist thrown at them uh, if they're not complying with this kind of stuff. So the bigger venues, you can almost guarantee they're paying these uh, these out. But again, if you don't have a song on the radio that's like in the mass consciousness of the public, you're probably not gonna be seeing much of this money anyway, so it's not so uh, relevant. But as you can see with these four main ones and the fifth one is a bonus, uh, there's a lot of negotiating and contracting and gathering cue sheets and processing the cue sheets and uh, divvying it out to the members. So this is why PROs are necessary. I know a lot of people think like, well, why do we need PROs? Can't we just directly uh, get our songs negotiated with these kind of, I mean, it's just, you can, if you can just imagine how much uh, work and infrastructure has to be built up and the amount of phone calls and, and uh, negotiating and getting contracts signed and getting metadata sorted, it is a lot of work, okay? And so the fact that these organizations do exist and they do provide this very valuable service, I personally am very thankful for them because without them, there is no industry for me. There's no industry for you. There's no way that this could be possible for your career. Again, in the future, we'll see if they evolve with more transparent reporting services, uh, maybe something with a blockchain technology attached to it. I, th I think that could be something that there could be an easier uh, and more transparent and probably a more efficient solution. And also to catch a lot of things that are going under the radar right now, which people are not aware of that they probably should be getting paid for. So I think it'll work better in the long run. But for right now, 2019, this year, this is what we got, okay? So I, I always say, you know, don't make, don't bite the hand that feeds you. So you might be frustrated with PROs. You might not, you know, uh, might not like how they do their business, but they are your only shot <laughs> at making this your full-time gig. So uh, hopefully this video helps understand what they go through, like what their process is, how they're dealing with all this, um, and maybe empathize a little bit with them as well for what they're doing for you. Um, because I do all of this basically to allow songwriters and publishers to create money and income off of their music. So it's a great thing. I'm glad that they exist. Of course, there can be improvements, but you know, such is life, right? What's perfect? Nothing is. So Anyways, if you found this video useful, helpful, informational, please leave a like. I love seeing those likes on my videos. It really does help out my channel. Uh, do subscribe if you haven't. I put out useful videos like this every single week, twice a week actually, Mondays and Wednesdays. And of course, if you don't hit that little bell, you won't be notified if I go live, if I do videos uh, or when I upload my videos. You, you won't be the first to know about it. You might not ever know that I released a really useful informational video that might have made a big difference for your sync licensing career. So do hit that bell and do subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.